Hello third graders and welcome to the first lesson of unit six. We are going to work on some subtraction strategies in this unit and we're going to work on trade first sub subtraction today. But first I need you to go get your whiteboard marker and eraser and I have some problems that I want you to record on your whiteboards. So I have these three problems. I want you to take a look at them and I want you to write down the answer as quickly as you can. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Okay, you ready? So 100 plus 20 plus 5 is 125. 200 plus 50 plus 3 253. 300 plus 60 plus 4 364. Erase. We're going to try it again with these three problems. Write down the answers and we'll go over them. So 300 plus 30 plus 0, 330. 500 plus 10 plus 2, 512. 800 plus 60 plus 18, 878. Erase. We're going to try it one more time. Here we go. Write down the answers to these. Okay. Give you a little bit more time for that one on the bottom. And here we go. 600 plus 9. 609. 900 plus 90 plus 10, 1,000. 700 plus 160 plus 15. You should have gotten 875. All right, go ahead and erase that. And I want you just to focus on the next slide with me for a second. We're going to be using... Um, I'm going to be using what I call base 10 shorthand. And that's when I'm drawing out the different base 10 symbols to represent place value. So this would represent 100, one line that's going to represent 10, and a little square is going to represent one. You could use base 10 blocks. I know that you have some in your toolkit. I don't know if you have enough to do what I'm going to ask you to do, but then you could just use the symbols like I am. Okay. So what I want you to do is to show 231 in two different ways on your whiteboard. You can use these symbols here. I'm going to pause the video, give you some time to show me 231, two different ways, and then we'll come back. All right, did you get your representations done for 231? Here's mine. I drew two hundreds blocks. So that's 100, 200, then three ten sticks or th three longs. So 200, 210, 220, 230, and one one square. So 231. 100, 200, 110, 120, 130, 131. That's one way. Here's my other way. What I did is I made a hundreds block, and then I used 10 longs because I know that there's 10 longs in a hundred. Then my three longs to represent 10, 20, 30, and then my one, 10, or excuse me, my one, one. So to count this, this would be 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, 230, 231. Maybe you came up with these same two representations. Maybe yours might look a little bit different. 
Go ahead and erase the board and put it to the side. And I need you to get out your math journal and find page 189. I'm going to pause the video while you get there. On this page, we are going to talk about two different subtraction strategies. One we've done in previous unit. One is a new one that we're going to be doing in the book, but it may not be new to you. So we're going to talk about that. So the first one that we're going to do on page 189, number one, whoops, let me get to my pen, sorry. In the first strategy, we're going to use the expand, expand and trade subtraction. Now we've done it before. So it should hopefully come back to you. But first, with any problem, what we want to do is our estimation. So when we estimate um, the answer to this problem, we're going to take our, our numbers. We've got 231. <coughs> and I'm going to estimate that. I can have do it two different ways. I can say, well, 231 is between 200 and 300. It's closer to 200. So I could use that as part of my estimate. Or I could say 231 is between 230 and 240. It's closer to 230. And I could use that. That's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say 230 minus got 174. Well, it's between 170 and 180. Okay. It's also between 150 and 200. It's also between 100 and 200. Now, here's the thing. When I'm doing an estimation, I want to use numbers that I know that I can subtract in my head. Okay? Well, I, I can subtract this in my head. So I'm going to round that to 170. Okay? So I'm going to say if I'm going to subtract 230 minus 170, my estimation is going to be 60. Okay? So when you write your estimate out, you need to do it as a number model. So now I'm going to use the expand and trade strategy to help me solve this problem. You stay on this page. I'm going to just show it to you on another slide, but it's the same problem. So we're going to work with 231 minus 174. All right. There's my estimation that I came up with. So when we're looking at 231, how many hundreds are in 231? How many hundreds? Well, there's a two in the hundreds place, so that means 200. So there's two hundreds. How many tens are there? There are three tens. And how many ones are there? There's one one. What about it in the number 174? How many hundreds are there? There's 100. There are seven tens. And there are four ones. Okay. Now, is 200 greater than 100? Yes, it is. Is 30, and I'm circling a digit 3, but that's in the tens place, so it's not just 3, it's 30. Is 30 greater than 70? No, it's not. Is 30 equal to 70? Well, no, it's not then we need to make a trade. What trade can we make? Well, we can break one of the hundreds into 10 tens and add them to the 30 to make 130. So I'm going to show that. So what I did here is I took 231, I wrote it out in my expanded form, 200 plus 30 plus 1, and I did the same thing for the 174, 100 plus 70 plus 4. And then when I'm looking at this, I can't take away 70 from 30. 
because their 30 is less than 70. So what I did is I came over to my hundreds, all right, and I took 100 away. So I crossed off the 200, I made it be a 100. And then I had 30 over here, so I took that 100 and I added it to the 30. Now I have 130. Then I can look in my ones column. All right. Is one greater than four? No, it's less than four. So we need to make another trade. So what I'm going to do is we're going to break apart one of the tens into 10 ones and add them to the one to make 11 ones. So I'm going to take away a set of my tens. So I had 130 tens over here. I'm taking 10 away. Now I'm going to have 120 and I'm giving those 10 ones over here. I had one. I'm going to add the 10. Now I have 11. Okay. So now that we've traded these and you can go ahead and write this down as we're going. We'll work on this together. Now I can go ahead and subtract. I'm going to start in my ones. So 11 minus 4 is 7 and 120 minus 70 is 50. Then over here I have 100 minus 100 that's 0. So I wrote it in an expanded form and if I write it in standard form, my answer is going to be 57. So 231 minus 174 is 57. Okay. Now, at the bottom of your page is a question that says, does this make sense? Does your answer make sense? Well, we could make an estimate. Well, we did make an estimate. And our estimate was 60. And doing all the work from the other page, we found that the answer is going to be 57. So is my answer reasonable? Yes, it is because it is close to my estimate. So that's one way that I know my answer is reasonable because it's close to my estimate. Okay, good. Now I want you to look at number two. We've got different directions for number two. Number two says solve problem two using trade first subtraction. All right, so we have the problem 406 minus 389. Let's make an estimate. I'm going to say a good estimate would be 400 minus 300 and I'm going to get 100. Now we're going to use the trade first subtraction strategy. Let's take a look at our numbers. Is 400 greater than 300? Yes, it is. Is zero greater than 80? No, it's not. Is zero equal to 80? No, it's not. Is six greater than nine? No, it's not. Well, we will need to make some trades. So we're gonna go ahead and trade all the way across. Before we finish this problem, my time on this part of the video is going to be over with in 30 seconds. So this video is going to be in two parts. I'm going to stop now and then you're going to open up the next video to finish the rest of the lesson. I apologize that it's so long, but sometimes we need to take a little bit longer to learn a strategy. Stop this video and start the next one.